Father, tonight we are before your awesome and holy presence. We know that you are very serious about what you have arranged for us. And you are committed to making us become what you want us to become. Tonight, Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have been doing and all that you continue to do. Thank you for the building that is going on in our lives by your word and by your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your commitment to this meeting. You didn't call us for fun. And it is not according to tradition or culture. But you have reserved for us this special encounter at such a time as this. Thank you because we know again you are going to stir up our spirit. You are going to connect us to the truths of the word of God. You are going to give us an assurance. You are going to open our eyes of understanding again. You are going to remind us of the things that we are forgetting. You are going to call our attention to the things that we are taking for granted. You are going to paint a picture of the kind of believer you want us to be by your word. You are going to empower us to be all that you have created us to be and to be a worthy ambassador of Jesus Christ on the earth. And Lord, we are ready. And we are opening our spirit to you tonight that you will fill our spirit. That there is nothing you are bringing today that will escape our attention. This is not a casual meeting. This is not just as we used to do. I pray that you will grant everyone a personal encounter. A fresh encounter with you, with your word, and with your spirit. In the name of Jesus. That this visitation will be a lasting one. It will change our lives and condition for good and we will be what you want us to be. Great Holy Spirit be free among us. Let every word carry the weight of the Spirit. Breaking down every rock and hardness of heart and bringing brokenness to the hearts of men. That we will not be carried away by the fashion of the last days. But we will stick to the truths of the word of God. And we will not live up to the expectation of the people of the last days. But we will begin to live up to the expectation of God. According to your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to see what you are showing us. Help us, O oh Lord, to be committed just the way you are committed to this meeting. Help everybody to take themselves serious. Online, on ground. Great Holy Spirit, be free among us. Do and say the things that only you can do and say. Glorify Jesus again and again and establish the counsel of the Father. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. I bind every spirit of intrusion and every spirit of disorganization. Every spirit that takes the attention of people away every spirit of distraction and misinterpretation of the truth, I bind you and I cast you out. That the Holy Ghost will take over the hearts of men and women online and on ground. And the Holy Ghost will take over these premises. Thank you, Father. Let the will of the Father be established. Let the counsel of the Father be established. We give you praise. We give you glory. Jesus only shall be seen tonight. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let me welcome you to the mentoring school, the first edition in 2024. And um, we're going straight to the business, and I want you to take yourself very seriously because we don't have more time. The world doesn't have more time. Our generation does not have more time. You don't have more time. That is not to say that you are going to die tomorrow. 
But beloved, the purposes of God is fast running out. And there are still much work that God must do in your life. The earlier you begin to allow God to do what he wants to do, the better for you. If some of us see the purpose of God for your life, you will know that most of us are seriously behind divine schedule. And that's why I want you to be personally serious in this year mentoring school. Because God is serious. We are in the last days. And there are terrible deviations from the old, from the ancient landmark. The Christianity we are looking today is that we are seeing today is not biblical Christianity. That different different perversion has taken over. If we are not careful to continually emphasize the scripture, a generation will come that will never know what it means to be a Christian. Because the way things are going, it's becoming increasingly possible that we may not know the difference between those who say they are Christian and those who are not Christian. Our differences is no longer there. People don't know the difference again. So, the Lord steered my spirit I mean, since December last year, to begin to look at this subject. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 5. We're studying from verse 13, verse 14, verse 15, verse 16. My commitment is to teach the word of God. And that's what I will stay with. There are no other style that is better than the word of God. If you are looking for something else, you are not likely to find it here. But if you are looking for the word of God, step by step teaching, step by step interpretation, because Jesus said himself, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. So when Jesus said by every word, now it means there is the need to teach the word of God word by word, verse by verse, so that the kind of Christianity you will be manifesting will be biblical Christianity. Our generation is losing biblical Christianity. And it is highly unfortunate. And I want you to be part of the remnant that will still remain committed to biblical Christianity. So in this mentoring school, God is very serious. I could gauge the feelings of the Father. It's so heavy upon my spirit. I don't want you to miss what God is bringing. You must be serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? This is not time for comedy. This is not time for joke. This is time for serious issues of the kingdom. Serious truth that must be emphasized, repeated again and again, so that you can master them. Not just to write them down in your notes, but to leave them out in the world. So, in the last mentoring school, we were able to be through with verse 13 of Matthew chapter 5. You know, I told you that time that we still have verse, verses 14, 15, and 16. So out of the four verses, we were able to, do, to be through with only one verse. Verse 13. And generally, what we are looking at is the identity and the ministry of a kingdom breed. The identity and the ministry of a kingdom breed. 
I have no shame to teach this subject because I believe it is the right subject for the hour. The right subject for you. The right subject for our generation. It is the subject that is missing today. That people today don't know their right hand from their left hand in Christianity. And it's a subject that we must teach and teach and teach and teach and teach. More importantly, those words came directly from the mouth of Jesus. And since Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, he alone can teach us what our identity is and what our ministries are. So in Matthew chapter 5, from verse 13 to 16, Jesus Christ himself revealed two things. The identity of a kingdom breed. And then the ministry of a kingdom breed. Somebody said the identity and the ministry. You know, there are many breeds of so-called believers today. But the one that is genuine is the kingdom breed. Somebody say kingdom breed. Somebody say kingdom breed. People that are heading towards heaven. Not only are they heading towards heaven. They are establishing the kingdom of God on the earth. They are dominating for Jesus on the earth. They are influencing their culture for Jesus on the earth. They are representing Jesus on the earth. They are propagating and establishing the culture of the kingdom on the earth. So, they are, not just, they are not just less concerned about what is happening in the world. In the guise of we are going to heaven. No, they are deliberately, deliberately taking over. Living out the life of the kingdom. To bring people to the kingdom. That is the breed of the Christianity that is biblical. Are you hearing me now? Dominating the world for Jesus. Through our life, through our conduct. Nothing is Christianity more than that. So when it is missing, everything is missing. Don't do church. Be a kingdom breed. Be a believer. Denomination has failed us. Let's get back to the Bible. Let's get back to the word of God. May God help us to reevaluate your own personal life. May God help you in the course of this mentoring school to reevaluate your type of Christianity and bring your life in full alignment to the word of God. Amen. We looked at verse 13. I told you, ye are the salt of the earth. That God, Jesus was not talking to everybody. He was talking to selected people. Who are the people he was talking to? Those who are chosen to be poor in spirit. Those who mourn. Those who are meek. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who are merciful. Those who are pure in heart. Those who are peacemakers. Those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Those who are joyful in the face of negative experiences of life. Just like this mentoring school is not for everybody. It is for those who are ready to become a kingdom breed. To understand their identity and their ministry. And not only that, we looked at the believer's ministry of spiritual influence. The believer's ministry of spiritual influence. That is the implication of being the salt of the earth. We are to influence the world, influence our environment. We also look at the practical implications of being the salt of the earth. 
We also look at the meaning of losing your spiritual savor. Losing your spiritual saltiness. Or losing your spiritual flavor as a believer. And then finally, we looked at the dangers of losing your spiritual savor. The dangers of losing your spiritual saltiness. And the danger of losing your spiritual flavor as a believer. That was where we stopped. So we were through with verse 13. Now, in this uh, mentoring school, I'm believing God that God will help us to look at verses 14 and 15. Are you hearing me now? The time has come for a methodical study of the word of God. Most people that go to church today don't know the word of God. Most of our churches in, the last, in this generation have become entertainment center. Not a study center for the word of God. So you see that many believers are empty. And if you don't know the word of God, you are not fit to be called a believer. If you say you are a believer, it means you believe in something. One of the things you believe in is you believe the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Also, the church must get back to the Bible. Studying it very deliberately and leaving it out. The Holy Spirit spoke to me this afternoon that in this mentoring school, God wants to do four things for us. And I want you to write them down. Because they are the goals that you will evaluate in your personal life. By the time we are through with the mentoring school, you must check these four things. Because that is what God said he wants to do. We are in a generation that is weak spiritually. Because we have too much of miracle service than Bible studies, than school of the spirit. So we have a generation of Christians that are raised by miracles. As I studied the Bible, and I looked at contemporary history, every generation of believers raised by miracles are generations that are very weak in the things of God. Is somebody hearing me now? Did you hear me now? Now, I don't know if you have noticed that miracle does not establish somebody in the faith. As good as miracles are, it does not establish people in the faith. It does not give people stamina in the spirit. Go and check people that are doing exploits for Jesus. The people that God is using as serious vessel in different generations. They are people that are fed on the diet of the word of God. Is somebody hearing me now? So if you are going to be strong, you must develop appetite for the word. You must develop appetite for the world. Church is being turned now to demonstration center. As we know the Lord, as we know the word of God, miracles are just they are dead advantage. Go and look at churches that are raised with prophecy. You won't find a Christian there. Are you hearing me now? Although there will be excitement. But there will be no knowledge. Only the word of God can establish you in the faith. Only the word of God can, can take you through life. And make you become victorious. Only the word of God can empower you with the grace to combat the devil and deal with the devil. Only the word of God in you is the hope of victory over the evil day. Are you hearing me now? So you must take it very seriously. So God said he's going to do four things. Number one. That you will not just be called a Christian. But you will begin to live the life. That's the first thing God said he wants to do. 
that he wants to raise people that will not just be called Christian, but people that will begin to live the life. Did you hear what I'm saying now? So you will not just be called a Christian, you will begin to live the life. Because it is not about what you are called. It is about what you are doing. What you are manifesting. Don't deceive yourself by what you are called. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't get yourself deceived by what you are called. Rate yourself by what you are doing. What kind of life are you living? That is what you should rate yourself by. Number two. God said, Whatever does not look like Christ in your life, it will destroy them by the truth of the word of God. Because you are never going to be successful until you become exactly like Christ. Did you hear me now? The end product of coming to church, the end product of reading the Bible, the end product of meetings like this is for you to become exactly like Jesus. You can't say you are a Christian because your father is a Christian. You can't say you are a Christian because you come to Abundant Grace Assembly. But you are a Christian because you look exactly like Jesus. Is somebody hearing me now? So God said, in these four sessions, in this mentoring school, whatever does not look like Christ in your life will be destroyed. He will identify it for you by his word and he will destroy them. So that from now on, you begin to look exactly like Christ. Look at me, everybody. Christ is our sample. Somebody say, Christ is my sample. How many of you, they say sample, isn't it? That it must look like this. If it doesn't look like this, then that product is not correct. Christ is our sample. Don't try to look like any pastor. Begin to focus looking like who? Like Christ. Hello, somebody. Christ. Somebody say Christ. So Christ is our sample. And we will see the picture of the sample of Christ where? In the word of God. So as we look at the word of God, you begin to see what you must become. And the word of God will begin to identify for you what are the things in your life that does not make you become like Christ. And then you will begin to destroy them. That's why I say you should listen very carefully. Because if you understand the teaching that I'm bringing by the Holy Ghost, you will understand the basis of Christianity. I pray you will not miss it. Because many people are missing it already. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number three. The Lord said he will uncover every bad impression about Christ. That your life and conduct have been reflecting to the world. It will uncover every bad impressions of Christ. Bad impressions about Christ. That your life and conduct have been reflecting to the world. Hello somebody. Did you get what I'm saying now? Did you get what I'm saying now? It will uncover every bad impressions about Christ that your life and conduct have been reflecting to the world. How do you understand that? This is the standard of God. That people will begin to form their impressions about Christ looking at your life. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? That is the kingdom arrangement. Christ is not living with them physically on a day-to-day -day basis again. Huh? Who 
is living with people physically on a day to day? You. Somebody say me. You are the one going to school. You are the one going to place of work. You are the one they know in the street. You are the one they see in the family. You are the one people see. But are they seeing Christ in you? What impressions are people having about Christ when they look at your life? Our life is supposed to be a pointer to Christ. People must be able to look at our life and have a correct impression about Christ. My wife should look at me and see Christ in me and have a good impression of Christ in me. Did you hear what I say? Your husband should be able to look at you and have a good impression about the Christ that he has not seen. But he has seen that in your life. Anything apart from this is not Christianity. I'm telling you, authentic Christianity is what are people seeing or knowing about Christ? What are they concluding about Christ? Just looking through your life. Did you hear what I say now? There are many believers today. They are the reason why the world have terrible impression about Jesus. They are the reason why people have negative impressions about Jesus. Most of the false impression that people have about Christ today is because of the life and conduct of people that say they are Christians. Don't be the reason why somebody will not come to church again. Don't be the reason why people will have wrong impression about Jesus. So that's the third thing that God said you want to do. You want to uncover every bad impression about Christ that has been reflected through your conduct. The wrong things that people are concluding about Christ as a result of the life that you are living. Did you get that now? Then number four. The Lord said, it will raise a people that are empowered by knowledge and grace to be a better representative of Christ on the earth. That is where the revival is in these last days. Forget about shout hallelujah seven times. Shout holy ghost fire 21 times. All those are Pentecostal gymnastics. The real issue, the real pot of meat, the basis of Christianity is for you to be empowered by knowledge, by grace, to be a what? A better representative of Christ on the earth. Did you hear what I said? Oh, did you hear what I said? I'm praying for you that you will be empowered by knowledge and by grace to be a better representative of Christ on the earth. Christianity is not going to move anywhere if that is not happening. Be among the people that God is raising. Not by name. Not by the name of their church. Not by the style of their worship. But by knowledge. By grace. To be a what? A better representative of Christ on the earth. I'm praying for you that you will be a better representative of Christ. On the earth. In the name of Jesus. Did you get those four things? Take note of it. That is the target of the Holy Ghost. That's the focus of the Holy Ghost. So you now know by those four things the kind of meeting you have come into and the kind of encounters you should be expecting. I am not given to raising weak people. The time has come for us to have serious deep knowledge of the kingdom. And you will not miss your portion. I can't hear your amen. Yeah. 
So let's open our Bible to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is then for good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Now, we have dealt with that in December, last year. Now, look at verse 14. This is where we are starting now. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You know, some, God is looking at your life and is, equally, equally, is, is, I mean, is making your life, is equating your life to a city. <laughs> Tell somebody, I am not ordinary. In the eyes of God, you are like a city. Somebody say a city. So to look down on yourself, as an ordinary single man is to live a lesser life. When you begin to see yourself like a city, you will become intentional about the life you live. Because you are a city in the sense of the weight of the influence of your life. You are a city in the sense of the weight of the influence of your action. People that know that their action, their speech, their life will affect many people, they are always very careful. Don't be a person that people are looking up to, that is looking away. Hello, somebody. That's the life of many Christians today. People are looking up to them, but they themselves are lost in distraction. They are looking away. They are not intentional. Come on, say, I'm a city. Come on, say, I'm a city. Don't, don't look at your age. Because people say, I'm a small boy. I'm a small. That's, the Bible says you are like a city. It means your life has a weight of impact, a weight of influence. Many, many people will be affected by your action. So you cannot afford to be careless. If you don't understand it, don't call yourself a Christian. Because the day you label yourself a Christian, all eyes are aware of you. Oh, did you hear what I say now? Don't mess that name up for the kingdom. If you don't understand who you are and the weight of your influence, stop saying you are a Christian. It's better they don't know you as a Christian than for you to mess it up. Don't make it difficult for people to believe in God. Don't make it difficult for people to have the understanding of the kingdom. Tell somebody, I am not ordinary. Talk to me, I'm not ordinary. Say it again. I am not ordinary. Now, can you talk to yourself? I am not ordinary. Then that's not a statement of pride. That's a statement of knowledge. I'm not ordinary in the sense of the fact that I know that my action will have impact on many people. So, I cannot afford to be careless. I am a mirror that many people are looking at. So I need to be intentional about the kind of influence coming out of my life. Ah, may you have the fear of God. May, may you understand what it means to have a correct influence upon the life of people. Don't be the one that people will go to hell because of your conduct. Don't be the one that people will be lost to eternity because of your carelessness. Remind yourself every day, I am like a city. That is the weight of your influence. You are a city in the spirit. People are looking up to you. The unbelievers are looking up to you. Never disappoint them. Did you hear what I say? 
I read verse 14 again. Ye are the light of the world. This is Jesus talking. Revealing your identity. And your ministry is a function of your identity. When you know who you are, then you will know what to do. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, I want you to write down ten truths. We are dealing with number one. You are the light of the world. There are ten truths that you need to understand. From those two verses. I'm focusing on verses 14 and 15. Maybe by December edition we'll be able to get to verse 16. Number one. It is important for every believer to understand their identity. That's number one point. It's a critical truth. It is important for every believer to understand their identity in the world. Their identity in the world. Many of us don't know that you are not of the world. You are different from the world. You are still you are still gauging your life with the standard of the world. You are still emulating the world. You are still being carried away by the system of the world. You are still, you are still trying to catch up with the world. Brothers and sisters, you are not part of the world. That's why it's important for you to understand your identity in the world. And that's why Jesus said, ye are the what? Light of the world. That's your identity. That's who you are. Not to know that is to rubbish your existence. Are you hearing me now? And if you don't know who you are, you will never be able to passionately pursue your ministry. It is when you understand your identity in the world that you'll be able to pursue your ministry passionately. It pains the heart of God when we forget who we are in the midst of the hustling and the bustling of the system of the world. It pains the heart of God when you forget who you are among your family members. You are not trying to be like them. You are trying to speak like them. You are trying to belong in their culture, in their reasoning, in their manifestation. It pains the heart of God. Hello, somebody. You must carry yourself consciously. I am not of this world. I am not of this world. Nothing of the system of the world should excite you. You shouldn't gauge your life and your achievement by the standards of the world. So, that's the first thing you must know. It is important for every believer to understand their identity in the world. Because that is when they will personally, passionately pursue their ministries. Did you get that now? May you understand who you are in the world. You are not like every other person. Let it, let it, let the consciousness be with you every time. As you go out today, have it in mind. As you go to school, as you go to a place of work, as you go to market, as you go, as you go through life, you are not like the world. If you don't understand your identity, you will not passionately pursue your ministry. Number two, if you don't know who you are, you cannot do what you are expected to do. 
if you don't know who you are as a believer, you cannot do what God expects you to do. Most of us, who, most people that call themselves believers today are using their life to fight against God. They are using their existence to advance the cause of the devil. And the reason is because they don't know who they are. Until you know who you are, you will never possibly do what you are expected to do. When you understand that I am the light of the world, that's your identity. Then you will understand that light always shines. That's your ministry. Did you hear that? Oh, did you hear that? But you will never know that you are expected to shine until you understand your identity as a light. Many lights have become darkness. Many lights have been overwhelmed by darkness. Because they don't even know their light. Talk less of shining. Your ability to do what you are expected to do is a function of the knowledge of who you are. Is somebody hearing me now? When you send your child to school, when we were young, I remember very well, my parents will use this language every time we are going to school. Remember the son of who you are. We know the meaning of that statement. It's a deep statement. They are only telling you, you are not like everything you see on campus. Remember where you are coming from. And as you continue to remember the son of who you are, you are empowered to fulfill correct expectation. But most people get to school, they forget the son of who they are. So they lose the ability to fulfill their parent expectation. Are you hearing me now? Number three. If the devil can successfully deceive you about who you are, it will easily distort your understanding of your ministry and destiny on the earth. If he can successfully, if the devil can successfully deceive you about who you are, it will easily distort Taught your understanding of your ministry and destiny on the earth. Once you are deceived, your understanding of your ministry and destiny will be distorted. A lot of believers today are deceived by the devil already. So they don't have a correct understanding of their ministry and destiny. If the devil can successfully deceive you about who you are, he can easily distort your understanding of your ministry and your destiny on the earth. When we talk of ministry, everybody think of being a pastor. That's a wrong interpretation. So, if they think of ministry as only when I become a pastor, they are on the path of concluding that not everybody is supposed to be in ministry. Because not everybody can be a pastor. Am I correct? So they now conclude that only the pastors, the evangelists, the apostles, the prophets and teachers are the ones in ministry. That is wrong. Ministry is what we are doing for God. Did you hear what I say? That's ministry. What are you doing for God? That's ministry. What you are doing for God with your life. What you are doing for God with your giftings. What you are doing for God with your skill. What you are doing for God with your talent. What you are doing for God with your money. What you are doing for God with your time. What you are doing for God. That is ministry. You don't have to be a pastor. Say after me, every believer. Talk to me, talk to me. 
is a minister. Say, I have a ministry. Say it again, I have a ministry. So don't, be, don't wait until you become a pastor before you, before you know you have a ministry. What if you don't become a pastor throughout your life? So if the devil successfully deceive you about who you are, it will easily distort your understanding of your ministry and your destiny on the earth. You are working in the company. You have a ministry in that place. You are working in the school. You have a ministry in that place. You are working in, in government establishment. You have a ministry in that place. Everywhere you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are an entrepreneur yourself. You have a ministry with that. There is nothing, there is nowhere you are that you don't have a ministry. You have a ministry there. And ministry is what I am doing for God there. Don't let your life be all that you do for government alone. Don't let your life be all that you do for yourself alone. Let your life be basically what I'm doing for God. Is somebody hearing me now? That's your ministry. God gives you money. What are you using the money for? God gives you time. What are you using the time for? God gives you wisdom. What are you using the wisdom for? God gives you voice. Good voice. What are you using that voice for? God gives you skill. What are you using the skill for? God gives you talent. What are you using the talent for? God gives you influence. What are you using the influence for? Is somebody hearing me now? What you are doing for God is what? Ministry. And in the real sense of it, it is God doing it through you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So everybody has a ministry. We lose the sense of our ministry because we lose the sense of our identity. Most Christians today lose the sense of their ministry and destiny because they lose the sense of their identity. That is why I said, if the devil can successfully deceive you about who you are, he can what? Easily distort your understanding of your ministry and your destiny on the earth. That's number what? Number three, I mean. Okay, number four now. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, Jesus emphasized the true identity of a believer in the sight of God. He emphasized. Because, why did I say he emphasized? He would have stopped at ye at the salt of the earth. But he didn't stop at that. What he was saying to them, by telling them ye at the salt of the earth, he was emphasizing by telling them ye at the light of the world. Did you hear what I say? He was using the things they are familiar with to communicate the deep truth of the kingdom. And he has a motive of clarifying the ministry of the believer on the earth in an unmistakable manner. So that nobody will be confused about what you are supposed to do as a believer. Christianity is more than I'm a member of Abundant Grace. Christianity is more than I'm a member of Deeper Life Bible Church. I'm a redeemer. That is, that, that is what many people have, have reduced Christianity to today. Denominationalism. That's not Christianity is more than that. Oh. Those denominations are these different schools of the spirit where you are taught and trained to become a Christian. They are not the end. They are the means. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Depending on what they are doing there, and depending on how much you cooperate with what God is doing there, that is what determines what you will turn out to be eventually. That you are a member of abundant grace doesn't mean you can't go to hell. 
If you don't become a Christian, that somebody is a member of deeper life doesn't mean he cannot go to hell. If he doesn't become a Christian, is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So Jesus emphasized when he said, "Ye are the light of the world." It wouldn't have been needed because he had already stated that ye are the salt of the earth. But for the sake of what emphasis. He wanted to use what they are familiar with to communicate the deep truth of the kingdom to them. He said, ye are the light of the earth. And his motive was to clarify their ministry on the earth in an unmistakable manner. If you know what salt is in the food, you will know who you are in the world. If you know what light is in the midst of darkness, you will know who you are in the world. Yes or no? That's what Jesus was saying. Number next. When you understand your identity and ministry, it will bring you into alignment with the will of God. When you, are, when you as a believer understand your identity and your ministry, it brings you into alignment with the will of God. Many, many, peop- many believers today are not in alignment with the will of God. They are on their own. Why? Because they don't understand who they are. And they don't understand their ministry. When I see mountains full of people today praying, look, look at me every, every now, look at me, everybody. You know, I've gotten to a stage in my Christian experience. Listen to me. When you see a, a congregation filled up, maybe a meeting filled up, jam-packed. People are there. And you see multitude there. Listen to me. I am no longer excited. What excites me is how many percentage of these people are serious believers? Because if we are counting crowd, Nigeria should be the capital of heaven. Because we know how to gather crowd. Don't you think so? The church in Nigeria can gather crowd. In fact, we will do everything possible, legal or illegal, to bring the crowd. And we will use every abracadabra to sustain the crowd. That's why the Christian community in Nigeria is a very weak community. Our impact is not felt at all. Because the church in Nigeria is predominantly baby. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? How can somebody leave a church because they rebuke him? Is that an adult believer? Or a baby believer? Do you leave your father's house because your father spank you? Answer me. How many of us have been spanked by our father before? Your father has one time or the other spank you, rebuke you. How many of us? Did you drop his name? Did you stop being his child? Did you get angry and leave your father's house? That's the spirit that is in the churches today. That's why the, the church in Nigeria is baby. Go to the mountains. The mountains are filled with people. That's no longer my excitement. My excitement, how much of these people are substantial in the spirit? I want to go to the fish. I want to go to the fish. I want to go to the When we have a generation that are looking for miracles, we have a generation that is not ready for the purpose of God. So you must locate yourself in this generation and find out where you belong to. How many of you follow what I'm teaching tonight? 
So, when you have an understanding of your identity and your ministry as a believer, it will bring what? It will bring you into what? Alignment with the will of God. Somebody say alignment. Look, look at me. The provision you are looking at will flow automatically when your life is in alignment with the will of God. The protection you are looking for will flow into your life when your life is in alignment with the will of God. The breakthrough you are looking for is not worthy of being your main target. It will flow automatically into your life when your life is in alignment with the will of God. No demon from the pit of hell have power over your life when your life is in alignment with the will of God. The will of God is your greatest security on the earth. Is somebody hearing me now? It is your greatest provision. It is everything you can have. But will your life be in alignment? This is why you must know who you are and what your ministry should be. Because when you know who you are, brethren, you know who you are as a believer, and you know your ministry in the world, every part, it will bring you in alignment with the will of God. I'm praying for you that your life will be in alignment with the will of God. May God straighten out all the rough edges. All those rough edges that is bringing your life into disalignment. May God straighten it out tonight. May God chip out all those unnecessary things that is making your life not to be in alignment. May the shizu of the word of God begin to chip them out of your life. I can't hear your amen. amen. Alignment. Somebody say alignment. Ah. Alignment. Alignment. When Jesus said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What do you think he's talking about? Alignment. Somebody say alignment. Somebody say alignment. Somebody say alignment. And when some, something is in alignment, you will know. And I want you to write the following things down. That must come into alignment with the will of God. These following things must come into alignment with the will of God. Number one, your life. Your life must come into alignment with the will of God. Only if you know your identity and your ministry. That's why you can't live like any other person. You live your life in alignment with the will of God. I don't want to become any other person. I want to be in alignment with the will of God. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't let it be your desire that I want to be like this, I want to be like that, I want to be like that. Let it be your desire that I want my life to be in what? In alignment with the will of God. Number two, your passion. Your passion must be in alignment with the will of God. What are the things you are passionate about? What are the things that interest you? What are the things that excite you? Are we together tonight? Check them, check them. If they are not in alignment with the will of God, you are not yet a believer. Your passion must be in what? Alignment with the will of God. When I say passion, the things that excite you, the things unto kailara, that's your passion. It must be in alignment with the will of God. And that can only happen when you know who you are and what your ministry and destiny is. Number three, your pursuit must be in alignment with the will of God. What are you pursuing? So I want to be a PhD holder at the age of 24. After that, what next? Hello? After that, what next? Do you know the goal you are pursuing today is the goal that some people have achieved 50 years ago? And it doesn't mean anything to them. 
Hello? Nothing can satisfy the heart of a man except the purpose of God. You want to build a house. Some people are tired of building. Some people are tired of building since the last 30 years. They are tired of building. They are tired of building. And but, but building is your own goal. Ah, I want to build. I want to. I want to. The heart of man can never be satisfied by the ephemeral things of life. I want to get married. Some people are already great grandma in their house. Marriage for them is achieved over 40 years ago. The thing that is still enticing you, they are tired of it. Number next, your plans. Your plans must be in alignment with the will of God. And that can only happen when you know who you are. And then when you know what your ministry is. Number next, your appetite must be in alignment with the will of God. And that can only happen when you have an understanding of your identity and ministry. Number next, your goals. What are your goals? Your goals must be in alignment with the will of God. And the last one, your relationships. Your relationships must be in alignment with the will of God. Those are the full test of alignment in your life. So when you have an understanding of your identity and your ministry, your life will be in alignment with the will of God. Your passion, your pursuit, your plans, your appetites, your goals, and your relationships will be in alignment with the will of God. I'm praying for you that you will pass the test of alignment. Number next. Which number am I taking now? Eh? Number six. Okay. Now, the calling and ministry of a New Testament believer is to continually express through his life what Jesus Christ is to the world. That's our calling. The calling and the ministry of a New Testament believer is to continually express through his life what Jesus Christ is to the world. That's your calling. That's your ministry as a New Testament believer. To continually express through your life what Jesus Christ is to the world. Did you get what I'm saying now? That's our calling. Come, somebody say, that's my calling. Somebody say, that's my calling. That's our basic calling. That's our primary calling. That's our fundamental calling. Everyone who is a New Testament believer, your calling is to continually express through your life what Jesus Christ is to the world. That when they look at your life, they must know what Jesus Christ is to the world. Did you hear what I just said now? When they look at your life, they must know what Jesus Christ is to the world. That's our calling. And unfortunately today, we have people that are pastors that people can accurately know what Jesus Christ is to the world through their life. We have people that are evangelists that nobody can know accurately what Jesus Christ is to the world through their life. So to fail in our primary calling is to make a nonsense of our ministry calling. It is not it is it is not reasonable to say I'm a pastor or I'm an evangelist or I'm a Christian brother or I'm a deacon or I'm a Christian sister when people cannot correctly see what Jesus Christ is to the world through my life. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So that's our calling. People must see 
what Jesus Christ is to the world. Very, very important. So Jesus seems to say, now this is the next point, Jesus is saying that believers are to become to the world through their life and conduct what he is to the world. Believers are to become to the world through their lives and their conduct what he is to the world. What Jesus is to the world, believers are to become that same thing to the world. Hello? Hello? What Jesus is to the world, believers must become that same thing to the world through their life and through their conduct. How many of you know the Bible says Jesus is the light of the world? How many of you know that? How many of you know Jesus is the light of the world? John chapter 8 verse 12. Write it down. Jesus is the light of He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth after me will not walk in darkness, but have what? The light of life. How many of you agree? That's what the Bible said there. If Jesus is the light to the world, then what is God expecting you as a believer to be to the world? Through your conduct and your life. You are also supposed to be light to the world. So we are to be to the world what Jesus is to the world. Hello? Until you become to the world what Jesus is to the world, you are not yet a believer. So you are not a believer because of the church you go. You are not a believer because of the size of your Bible. You are not a believer because of the name of your church. Because of the, your title in the church. That's not what makes you a believer. You are not a believer because of the way, because you pray 10 times a day. You are a believer because through your life and conduct, you are to the world what Jesus is to the world. Every man here, you must be to your family what Jesus is to the world. If Jesus is the light of the world, then you must be the light in your family. The same thing every woman, the same thing every boy, every girl. Isn't it a very important advantage that God expects you to live your life to the standards of Christ? We want all the benefit of the kingdom, but we are not ready to comply with the standards of the kingdom. We want the devil to run away from us. We want to overcome Satan, overcome sickness, overcome disease, but we are not yet ready to live our life to the standard of the, of, the, of, of the life of Christ. Most of the things we are afraid of will be afraid of us if we live our life according to the standard of the life of Christ. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? There is a way Christ lived his life that he wasn't sick. Can you live your life that way? There is a way that Christ lives his life that no demon can wait for him. Can you live your life that way? In fact, God expects us to live our life that way. So if the Bible says Jesus is the light of the world and Jesus himself is saying you are the light of the world, what does that tell you? What Jesus is to the world. Be the same to the world through your life and conduct. I pray we will not fail. You know many people are failing today. If you have been failing before, let today be the last time you will ever fail. God has come in this mentoring school to set you on a new path. To give you a better understanding of how to be a better representative of Jesus Christ on the earth. Did you hear what I said? So he's calling the believers to be light also. John 8, 12. John 9, 5. John 12, 46. 
These are scriptures that recognizes Jesus as the light of the world. So whatever Jesus is to the world, is calling the believers to be also. Number nine. Do you know this calling is not a new concept? How many of you agree with me? This calling is not a new concept. What calling? The calling to be to the world what Jesus is to the world. The calling to be to the world what God is to the world. It's not a new concept. In the Old Testament, this revelation was very clear. God is light. Yes or no? And his people were called to be what? Light. So that's not a, that's not a new concept. So when Jesus now comes in the New Testament and is now saying, what I am to the world, you should be the same to the world through your life and conduct. Don't look at it as, hey, it's something new. No. It's still the continuation of the standards of the kingdom. God is light in the Old Testament. So he expects his people to be light wherever they go. I want you to write this down. Second Samuel chapter 21 verse 17. Second Samuel 21 17. First Kings 11 36. First Kings 11 36. When you look at Psalm 27 verse 1. That's a popular psalm. How many of you agree with me? What does the Bible say in Psalm 27 verse 1? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Look at me. What was David saying? If you look at my life, you will see the light of God. Isn't that what he's saying? Talk to me. My manifestation is equal to the light of God. I reflect the light of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So looking at my life, you will see the light of God. Looking at my life, you will see the salvation of God. So he said, who shall I fear? I am, I am exactly what God is. So why will I fear? Whatever wants to come against me must come against God. Hello, somebody. So it is, we are afraid because we are not what God is. We are running for the devil because we are not what God is. So it's not a new concept. The same standard, Jesus continued in the New Testament. That everything they know Jesus to be, you must be to the world. Hello, somebody. Number 10. The measurement of the success of a believer. The measurement of the success of the life of a believer is how much of the light of Christ he has reflected to the world. If you didn't get all the numbers, listen to the teaching again and again, you will get the nuance you missed. Amen? This, the measurement of the success of the life of a believer is how much of the light of Christ he has reflected to the world. How do you measure that a believer is successful? It's not how many cars he has. Look up. They have reduced Christianity to how many cars you have. Especially all these, all, all these so-called Gen Z generation. They don't know anything about Christianity to some of them is how many cars you have. Real authentic man of God is in how flamboyant he can be. How many of you understand what I'm saying? When a pastor does not have a latest car, they don't believe he's anointed. Who gave us that version of Christianity? That's a perversion. Did you hear what I said? 
That's a perversion. When our yardstick for measuring success is wrong, our manifestation will be wrong. I believe God is still sparing some of us who are remnant to call this generation back to authentic Christianity. Because when you get to a gathering today, and their church is not, their building is not ultra modern with AC, with everything. They don't believe God is there. They are looking at them that these people are just joking. These people are just playing. Who told you that it is structures that determine the presence of God? Where did we get that, that, that kind of understanding? We have a generation today that is being infi- that are that we have a generation of people today infiltrating the world in the name of motivational speakers. Most motivational speakers today call themselves servants of God. Motivational speaking is not a man of God. That somebody is a motivational speaker doesn't make him a pastor. A pastor is anointed to teach the people the word of God and to impart the grace of God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So we have a generation that doesn't know how to trap the things of God. So they are measuring success of people by how many cars they have. They are measuring success of people by how many houses they have built. They are measuring success of people by how many people gather in that program. That is how they know a program is successful. We are able to have 5,000 people there. Ah, they said that program was great. That is an anathema. We're able to gather 10,000 people there. Ah, they say that's a great program. How do you know? How do you, why do you measure the greatness of a program by the population? We measure the greatness of a program by the alignment of that program with the purpose of God. Did you hear what I say now? We need to shout this at the top of our voice so that our generation can come back to the real indices of spirituality. When you see a church that two or three people are there, well, they, we have a church that will look down there. Uh, uh, what, you, tea arrive. what do you mean by that? The Bible says we are two or three are what? Are gathered. I am what? I, who are you to judge where God's presence is? May God deliver us from perversion. That's why when I started, I said, if we are not careful to establish these things, a generation will come that will never know the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't let your flair be in the modern, modern assessment. Let your, let your passion be in the biblical assessment. How do you measure the success of a believer? You don't measure the success of a believer by how many degrees he has. That somebody is, somebody is addressing the Senate or the Federal Republic of Nigeria doesn't make him a successful believer. The measurement of the success of the life of a believer is how much of the light of Christ he has reflected to the world. Look up. Say after me. How much talk to me. How much of the light of Christ I have reflected to the world. That's how God measure the success of your life. May your life not be a waste. May your life not be a waste. In fact, the life of some people, an aborted pregnancy is better than them. May that not be your life. Why will you say you are a believer when you are not reflecting the light of Christ? How much? How much? That's how God raised us. That's how God measures success. How much? How much of the light of Christ? How much of the light of Christ I have reflected to the world? That is how successful I am in the sight of God. Did I say you shouldn't go to school? No. Did I say you shouldn't buy a car? No. 
Did I say you shouldn't build house? No. Did I say the church should not be 5,000, 10,000? No. But to now put those things together as the yardstick for measurement of the success of a believer is an aberration. And that's why many people are putting their hands into things that should, they shouldn't put their hands into. Because their understanding of success is completely different from what God is looking at. Are you with me? You know, I want, when you get back home, I want you to go and listen and, and get all these ten truths. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Ha! He was simply saying, how much of the light you are to the world is how successful you are in my sight. Did you hear what I say? How much of the light you are to the world is how successful you are in my sight. And he said, a city, what? Set on a hill cannot be hidden. All eyes are on you. 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 Unfortunately, it looks to me that the unbelievers understand these things more than those of us who are believers. You say how? When you misbehave as a believer, an average unbeliever will tell you, but you say you are a Christian. How many of you have heard that? How many of you have uh, understand what I'm saying? An average unbeliever that has never been to church before, we say, but you say you are a Christian. What is he saying? You are supposed to be different. You are supposed to, to reflect the light of Christ now. This thing that you are do, doing is not the light of Christ. Praise God. Let me teach for 10 more minutes and then we'll pray. Amen. I hope you, got some, you are getting something tonight. Now, I want you to write this. Let me start it. I'll complete it tomorrow. The basic expectation of God from the believers. What is God expecting from me? I see God coming in this year mentoring school to set standards for us. So that you will think twice before you say I'm a Christian. You will, be you will be saying I'm a Christian out of understanding, out of revelation, not out of culture, not out of tradition, not out of what is in fashion. It is fashionable now for everybody to say I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. When you are feeling firm, they say religion, you put Christianity there. That's all that people know about Christianity. But the Holy Ghost is bringing the standards now. So what is the basic expectation of God from me as a believer? Is that okay? What's the basic expectation? Somebody say, what is the basic expectation? I wrote in my notes that there are five basic expectations of God from the believer. And let each of these expectations, let it be the driving, the driving force of your life. One of the prayers that I want you to begin to pray. Let my life be a fulfillment of your expectation. Write it down and pray it until we meet in the mentoring school again in December. Don't let a day go or any time you are going to pray, go without praying that prayer. Lord, let my life be a fulfillment of your expectation. And I hope those who are leading us in intercession will put this as a major point of prayer beginning from this mentoring school. Let my life be a fulfillment of your expectation. Number two, my life will not be a disappointment of your expectation. My life will not be a disappointment of your expectation. May your life not disappoint divine expectation. May your life be a fulfillment of divine expectation. How many of you know how it will look like after God had boasted about Job 
in the sight of the devil. How many of you remember that place in the scripture? When God boasted about Job. You remember when the Bible says, when the sons of God came to appear before the Lord, the devil also came among them. And immediately God cited them and said, ah, Mr. Man, where have you been? <laughs> where have you been? In the language of human being, it's like, oh, no, that was a more creepy They didn't write that in the Bible. But if you read it, he said, I've been moving up and down, up and up and down. That's the ministry of the devil. He moves up and down, prognosing to affairs that doesn't concern him. Moving up and down, moving up and down. Accusing the brethren. There are two critical ministries. The ministry of intercession and the ministry of accusation. Jesus Christ is, is working the ministry of intercession. Yes, he's interceding for you in heaven. The devil is working the ministry of accusation. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So the devil is moving up and down, moving up and down. So he responded to God and said, I've been moving up and down, crisscrossing the whole earth, moving up and down. And God said, in this your aimless wandering, <laughs> did you notice Job, my servant, that, that he has no second in the world, a man that fear God. A man, how will it be if Job disappointed God? May you not be a, a, a child that will bring shame to God. Yeah. And then you know the devil said, why will he not, why will he, why, 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 why will he not love, love you? You have, you have prospered him now. You have protected him now. You have done everything good for him. Why will he not serve you? Let me touch him and see if he will not if we will not deny you to your face. <laughs> and God, still boasting about Job, said, go ahead and touch him. You will see he will not deny me. I know him. I can vouch for him. Go ahead and touch him. But his life is not in your hand. Touch him. And you know the devil touch him. He touched all his children. He touched his houses. He touched his money. He touched his property, his company. He touched his business. He touched his health. The Bible says in all these, Job did not sin. I believe Job will have a special seat in heaven. I pray for you. You will be a son that God will be proud of. Look at me. The prayer I've given you tonight, those two prayers, they are more important than God give me car, God give me food, God give me all this prayer of uh, the wishes of my father's house. It will not be necessary if you pray this one very seriously. That my life will be a fulfillment of divine expectation. That God will not regret ever giving me life. That I will be profitable to his kingdom. That my life will not be a disappointment to his kingdom. To his expectation. So what is the expectation of God? The basic expectation of God from the believer. It is this basic expectation that should form, that should drive your life. As from today. I, 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 I allow the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is painting a picture that what you begin to see from now will be different. You will not begin to see life the way other people are seeing life. You begin to see life in the perspective of God. And that's when your life will be meaningful. It's not for fun. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say everybody in the world is the light of the world. He said, you, 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 you. The meaning is, you are special. Yes or no? You are special. You are special. You are special. You are special. You are not like them. You are the light of the world. So what is the expectation? Number one. The minimum expectation of God from you is for you to reflect the true light of life. Which Jesus Christ is. That's the first minimum expectation of God. 
that you reflect the true light of life. The true light of life. Which is Jesus Christ. That you should reflect the true light of life. And that becomes necessary because the world is filled with darkness. Did you get what I'm saying now? Light is very important because darkness covers the earth. If there is no darkness, then light will not be essential. Yes or no? If we remove all the bulbs here, what happens now? There will be darkness. It is the reality of darkness that makes light essential. There is darkness in the world. Yes or no? In fact, the world is becoming more darkened by the day. You know, there is a song that we used to sing. Oh, Christ ki, Christ ki joba rete, ki a shere tere, fopa iri re fo, bo bo yipa eche, o kun. Bole si be ni leke feri di de ora di de ma she The world is becoming more dark, more darkened. Darkness everywhere. Go to our offices. Bribery and corruption. Corruption has destroyed our nation. Everywhere you see people, they are potential thieves. Hello? When they want to buy this Bible in government circle, in civil service circle, this Bible, they may say it's one million. This Bible. <laughs> and people will pass it. And if you don't do it, some people will like, if you say you are not going to, some people will want to kill you. Darkness is everywhere. Darkness everywhere. Darkness everywhere. Sin everywhere. Iniquity everywhere. And all that. That's the more reason. Somebody said that's the more reason. God is expecting me, expecting you to reflect the true light of Christ. To reflect the true light of life. Because the world is filled with darkness. That's the first basic expectation of God from you as a believer. God wants you to reflect the true, the true light of life. Are you hearing me now? The true light of what? Of life. Don't forget it. Anywhere you find yourself... This is the expectation of God. Let the expectation of God be the force driving your life. Let it be the target you are targeting. That here I will reflect the true light of life. In this company, I will reflect the true light of Christ. In my school, I will reflect the true light of life. That is the expectation of God. And the more reason why it should be so is because... The world is full of darkness. Don't let the darkness of the world terrify you. Let it challenge you to shine as light. Light is more beautiful in the midst of darkness. Light is more influential in the midst of darkness. Is somebody hearing me now? Everywhere you are find yourself, if you are a believer, the first expectation of God from you is to reflect the true light of life.
And who is the light of life? Jesus Christ. To reflect Jesus Christ. All this theology, this is our basic ministry. How can you reflect if you are not in intimate relationship? Hello, somebody? Look up. Do you agree with me that it takes intimate relationship with Christ to reflect the light of Christ? Yes or no? Good. You can reflect the life of Christ at a distance to Christ. You can reflect the life of Christ at a distance. When you see two people get married, over the years, as they continue to agree and grow and love themselves and all that, do you know they look, they look alike at a point? Yes or no? They look alike at a point. That is alignment. That is reflecting. You know, there are many things that if you come to me separately and ask me, 80% of the time, I will say the same thing that mommy will say if you go to her separately. Because over the years, because of intimacy, we reflect our lives. The reason why the, you, many believers today are not reflecting the light of Christ is because they have no intimate relationship with Jesus. Paramo Jesu, Paramo Jesu, Sumo Jesu, Titi do Pi, Lo Santa Bilo, Rumashe Yaku, Sumo Jesu, Titi do Pi. I won't hear today. Only two hours. I saw the Lord. Only rather than one calling like yes. Only rather than only two. Only two. Even the so-called gospel musician are singing the song of the devil now. Those old hymns. When you hear it, you will know that these people have intimate relationship with Christ. When I see the song you are singing, I will know who you are close to. When I see the slang in your mouth, I will know who you are close to. You can't hide it. When I hear the way you talk, the manner of your speech, the manner of your lifestyle, I will know who you are close to. Until we are intimate with Christ, we can never reflect the light of life. And if we are not reflecting the light of life, 1,000 Bible would disappoint the expectation of God. Even if we have 1,000 Bible. Even if we come to church and sleep in the church every day. If we are not reflecting the, the light of Christ, we disappoint God. May you not disappoint God. May you not. It, it pays me to disappoint everybody than to disappoint God. Oh yes. I pray for you that when God looks through your life and look over your life, May God never say, I am disappointed. May God not say, I'm disappointed. It's better for you to disappoint the world than to disappoint God. God is not asking for what is too much. This is the minimum expectation of God from you as a believer. That you, you reflect the light of Christ through your life and conduct. And you can never reflect the light of Christ except through intimacy. Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. All my long, my pilgrim's journey, Savior land. Be close to thee, thou ma, thou art ma, thy portion. Grim 
Jesus, Johnny, Savior, let me close to Thee. Ah, close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee, all along my pilgrim's journey, Savior, let me close with you know, let this be your focus. These are the genera- This is the time that we must, we must, we must look down on the accessories that the devil is giving us. The real Christianity is that you reflect the life of Christ. How will you say you are a Christian in your family? They don't know you are a Christian. They can't see the light of Christ in your life. Nobody wants to relate with you because they don't trust you. Is that a Christian? Nobody believes what you say because they know you can lie. Is that a Christian? Why do we have believers today that are bringing shame to the kingdom? Eh? Why do we have believers today that are bringing shame to God? Shame to the kingdom. Must you say you are a believer? Should you say you are a Christian if you can't pay the price of reflecting the light of Jesus? I'm praying that your heart will be set on fire tonight. And you will look away from all the nonsense accessories that they have added. And you will, you will, you will fix your focus on getting closer to Jesus because the closer you are to Jesus, the better you can reflect his light. The better you can reflect his light. Don't be carried away by the assessment of the world. Don't be carried away by the parameters for measuring success in the world. Let the parameters of God be your consuming focus. Be consumed with being a reflector of the light of Jesus. Thou my everlasting portion more than friend all life to me all along my pilgrim's journey all along my pilgrim's journey Savior let me walk with thee Savior let me walk with thee close to thee close to thee let's rise up on our feet we are going home tonight close to thee Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. All along my pilgrim's journey, Savior, let me walk. Not for ease or worldly pleasure, not for ease. All worldly bless. Not for fame my prayer shall be. Not for fame my prayer shall. Gladly will I toil and suffer. Gladly will I toil and suffer. Only let me walk with thee. Only let me walk with thee. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. Gladly will I toil and suffer. Gladly will I toil and suffer. Through the veil of shadows, lead me through the veil of shadows. Bear me o'er life's fruitful sea. Bear me o'er life's fitful sea. Then the gate of life eternal. Then the gate of life eternal. Lord with thee, may I enter Lord with thee, close to 
close to me, close to me, ah, close to me, close to me, close to me, close to me. Then the gate of life eternal. Then the gate of life eternal. May I enter, Lord, with thee. May I enter, Lord, If your heart is not caught in you, then your heart can never be sensitive in you. I want you to put your two hands on your head and say, Lord, I want to be close to thee. Intimacy with Jesus helps you to be a reflector of his light. Lord, I will not disappoint your expectation again. I'm not going to walk with Jesus at a distance. I want to be close to you. Whatever is separating me from God, let it die tonight. Whatever is Removing me from intimacy with Jesus. Let it die tonight. Close to thee, O Lord. I will not disappoint your expectation. God is not looking for psychedelic Christian. God is looking for biblical Christian. Biblical Christian are people who fulfill the expectation of God. The expectation of God is that we will reflect the light of Christ. And we cannot reflect the light of Christ. Until we are closer to Jesus. Oh Lord, as from today, never again will I walk with you at a distance. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Never, never again will I walk with you at a distance. Never will I follow you because of what I can get. Never will I follow you because of my daily bread. Never will I follow Jesus because of food, because of money. Never will I follow Jesus because of miracle. I want to walk close to thee, close to thee reflecting the light of Jesus help me Lord help me Lord never to disappoint your expectation I will not disappoint God let's talk to the Lord let's talk to the Lord I want you to pray, 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 pray tonight. Let your fire, let your heart catch this fire tonight. When I started, I told you that God is serious about this meeting. This is not an ordinary meeting. God is doing something. God is bringing us back to biblical Christianity. We are not a believer in mouth. We are a believer in life, in action. In the light of Christ. Your success is how much of the light of Christ you reflect to the world. That's your success. That's the success of your life. At the end of our life, that's how God is going to rate our life. It's not going to be by how many degrees you have, how many houses you build. As, in, as good as those things are, that's not how God measures success. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. To be a light for you in the darkness of the world. To reflect the light of, that the darkness of this world will not overwhelm me. That the darkness of the world will not overwhelm me. Everywhere I am. Let us from today, I carry the consciousness of my identity. I carry the consciousness of my identity. I will not be a disappointment to you any longer. I will fulfill your expectation. I will not disappoint God. Oh, let's talk to the Lord tonight. Rest the brother Zonelia. Jende Mostole Ambroma Sunday. May God register this truth in your heart. May God register this truth in your heart. This is serious. This is authentic Christianity. Anywhere I find myself, I will reflect the light of Christ. They can see Christ through me. They can have correct impression about Jesus. What just looking at my life? Oh Lord, help me mercy on me. All the areas I have disappointed you, Lord, have mercy on me. Let it be a new beginning for me as from today. Let it be a new beginning for me. On the scale of God, I will not be found wanting. On the scale of God, I will not be found wanting. On the scale of God, I will not be found wanting. 
Let's talk to the Lord. On the scale of God, I will not be found wanting. I will not be found wanting. On the scale of God, I will not be found wanting. Let everyone assess, assess your own Christianity, evaluate it, and get back to the right type of Christianity. And get back to a serious life of reflecting the light of Jesus. Never again will I be overwhelmed by the darkness of the world. Let the revelation of my uniqueness, let it be clear to me all the time. Let it be clear to me all the time. Rest the promo de Zadea. Jembr must the Libra Mandes de Lia and Remo Sunday. Ebraga de Zadea de de Madema Zado Yanda. Jembr must the Libra Masasala Bada Mustole and Brumo Solia. Embrama de Zadea. Jede Mustelia. Era Sodeba. Roste de Marado Sodoy. Jembr must no more distance between me and Christ. No more distance. No more distance. Intimacy. 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 Intimacy with Christ. Intimacy with Whatever does not look like Christ in my life, let it die tonight. Let it die tonight. Let it die tonight. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let it die tonight. Everything that does not look like Christ in me, let it die tonight. 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 Everything in my life that does not make me look like Christ, that is not a reflection of Christ, let it die. Every strange manifestation, let it die. 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 Reste promo de mazai. Jende mosto le promandis delia. Jembro mosone le promande sedeye de e promadeza. Ye baladoza. Linga dis de libro masandolea. Jembro mosto le bai. Wherever you are, you are not like them. Even if you are in, in foreign land, you are not like them. Let the spirit of Daniel, let it take over your life. Even if you are in foreign land, you are not like them. You are like Christ. You will live like Christ. You will reflect the light of Christ. In strange land, reste mbrozede. Jene malandoste le bromozo. E bromandeste le bromosondelia. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, if you are taking a decision to get closer to the Father, to Jesus, tonight, that's the first call in this mentoring school. This is not a yeah, a, the usual mentoring school. God has come to really search us out. If you are taking that decision that from today, I will be closer to Jesus. I want you to raise up your hand and put those hands on your chest. I'm going to pray for you. That you will be a reflector of the light of Christ. You will be a reflector of the light of Christ. Put your hands on your chest if you are responding to that. I'm going to pray with you. Father, thank you tonight. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has come out expressly. Thank you, Father, for this investment. Thank you for calling our attention to biblical Christianity, authentic Christianity. Thank you, Lord, for steering our spirit again. That we will really function in the light of our identity as a light of the world. That we will no longer be a disappointment to the expectation of God. Lord, I pray that your hand will rest upon these ones permanently. In the name of Jesus, let there be an alignment of the lives of your children with the will of God. That your children will begin to pursue alignment consciously, deliberately through their life, through their conduct. They will begin to pursue alignment. Alignment of their life with the will of God. Alignment of their passion. Alignment of their plans. Alignment of their pursuit. Alignment of their relationship. Alignment of their conduct. Alignment of everything they life with the will of God. That nobody will begin, nobody will live their life outside the identity and the ministry of God for our lives. I pray that intimacy with Jesus will be restored. The journey that is starting today will be a permanent journey. 
close to thee will not be a song we are singing. It will be an experience we are giving. It will be an experience of our lives. Close to thee, close to thee. Help us to walk very close to you. In the name of Jesus, every distance between, between your children and Christ will seal it up by the power of the blood of Jesus. Whatever does not make your children become a reflector of the light of Christ, they die out tonight. We will put every sin, we will put every iniquity, we will put every misunderstanding, every violation of the will of God. Let that be a focus tonight to reflect the light of Christ. Now, wherever we are, nobody will say, are you a Christian? When they see the light of Christ in your life, they will confirm that you are a Christian. I pray that no one will be a disappointment to the expectation of heaven again. That everyone here, online, on ground, will fulfill the expectation of the Father will not be children that bring shame to God. Help us to live to that expectation. To live up to the standards of heaven. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for how you have moved with us tonight. I pray that these words will be settled in the hearts of men and women. And these words, we hear it in our spirit. Even when we are alone. This voice of the one that cry in the wilderness will not live our lives. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.